Good afternoon and welcome to the 23rd annual Life Sciences BC Awards Ceremony presented by Ferris. It's wonderful to be here. While we would have loved to have been here in person, we are doing this virtually again one more year, and, but we are thrilled to be able to do it to celebrate the accomplishments and impacts of the BC life sciences sector generally and specifically our 2021 award winners. One of the advantages of our event being virtual is that we have people joining us from across Canada and the United States. So thank you everyone for taking the time out of your busy days to join us. We encourage you to use social media to help share this event and use the hashtag LSBC Awards and our handle at, at Life, Sciences BC underscore, Life Sciences underscore BC. Before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm joining this event from within the ancestral, traditional, and unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, including the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Salatooth First Nations. I'd like to acknowledge that all of you are joining us from other unceded Indigenous territories across this beautiful province and country. For 23 years, Life Sciences BC has brought our community together to celebrate British Columbia's life sciences leadership with the support of Ferris and our award sponsors. Thank you very much for your support. The BC life sciences sector has never been stronger. According to a, the sector report that we released in coordination with the BC government last year, BC is home to Canada's fastest growing life sciences sector with a dynamic and world re renowned life sciences community comprising of nearly 2000 companies and employing roughly 20,000 people. I probably don't need to tell all of you how great we actually are. Our sector through our world-class scientific discoveries delivers critical needed innovation for our health system and is attracting significant amounts of investment over 2 billion alone last year and creating high paying jobs. Over the last year, BC Life Science Innovation has been at the forefront for developing solutions to address COVID-19 that are being deployed globally in vaccine development, therapeutics, ventilators, screening tools, the COVID-19 assessment app, much of our data and analytics. We've certainly been on the world stage. And all of this has happened out of a strong foundation in world-class science, innovation, entrepreneurship, and leadership. So today is about taking a pause to celebrate and recognize some extraordinary individuals and companies. As you all know, we're here once again virtually, and a highlight of our awards is always the videos. So big kudos to Biofilm Media, who demonstrate great creativity in, in, in interviewing and producing the videos virtually. I've actually only seen 20 seconds of one video so far, and I have to say it's, it was um, pretty creative and pretty amazing. Anyway, in lieu of receiving people's awards in person, each award winner has been shipped their award and a celebration gift basket in advance of this event. So if you see some of our award winners sipping champagne while they're delivering their acceptance speech, don't be alarmed. We're hoping that they will take that opportunity. Next year, we hope to be doing all of this together. This annual event is possible only due to the generous support of our sponsors, many of whom have been longtime supporters of the annual Life Sciences uh, Awards Ceremony presented by Ferris. So our sincere appreciation goes to our presenting sponsor, Ferris, and our award sponsors, AstraZeneca, the British Columbia Securities Commission, Canaccord Genuity, Chinook Therapeutics, Genome BC, Iacor, Janssen, the Michael Smith Foundation for Health Research, Pfizer, St. Paul's Foundation and Providence Health, and our event supporter, Arinia Pharmaceuticals. Our media partners, Biofilm Media and Business in Vancouver. And I'm excited to announce that our annual Business in uh, Vancouver Life Sciences BC magazine is now available. Here's a shameless plug for it. In addition to being a great snapshot of the sector, Life Science BC sponsors and members, this year's award winners are also profiled. The magazine is being distributed through Business in Vancouver's um, publication and is also will be soon available on our website. If you'd like a copy, please don't hesitate to reach out to um, Amanda and she'll be able to arrange that. We also want to thank our annual sponsors whose generosity um, allow us to do all the many things that we do from undertaking activities to advance the sector, profile our members, provide value to our members and host multiple events throughout the years. 
So our platinum sponsors are Admare Bio Innovations, Ferris, GSK, Janssen, Pfizer, and Roche. Our gold sponsors, Abcelera, Blake's, Innovative Medicines Canada, Novartis, and Stem Cell Technologies, and our silver and bronze sponsors as well. Thank you very much for all of your support. Every one of these organizations is integral to our ecosystem, and without those support, we would not be able to do what we do. And I would like to say many of these sponsors have been with us for decades, which is fantastic. Thank you again. 2001 actually marks Life Sciences BC's 30th anniversary, we discovered over the summer. The sector has never been stronger, and over the next 12 months, we're going to be looking for ways to celebrate 30 years of life science leadership for British Columbia, all driven off of our world-class research, innovation, and leadership. More to come on that. So now to kick off the program, because we're here to celebrate the awards winners, not just listen to me, I'd like to ask Life Sciences BC Chair of the Board of Directors, Scott Phillips, President and CEO of Starfish Medical to join us to say a few words. Over to you, Scott. Thanks so much, Wendy. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I'd like to welcome all of today's uh, award recipients, friends and family, special guests, sponsors, community partners, and particularly members to this important annual event. Uh, those of you who are new to the sector or new to, the, to LSBC may not know, but this is traditionally our sort of one big splash event of the year where everybody dresses up in their suits and, and dresses and shows up to the Vancouver Convention Center and, uh, and sits in tables with their lawyers and accountants and, and all and so on. It's a, it's a big celebration for the, for the whole sector. And it's remarkable we've had so much success carrying this event forward uh, virtually like so many other events. We've been surprised this year at just how successful the virtual events have been, in some cases way more successful than they were as in-person events. So uh, certainly it's a remarkable industry. COVID has brought out incredible strengths in the industry, I would say. Uh, so many impressive accomplishments. People in the audience here, many of you have, uh, have done major financings, you've launched products, uh, and uh, you know, there's it's I almost can't think of a big story in Vancouver that hasn't moved forward in some big way in the life sciences sector. So um, I, I won't list them all because I'll insult somebody by by forgetting them. But billions of dollars of impact, and uh, and so and in addition, we actually through LSBC this year have stronger relationships with government than we've ever had before. And one of the things government is good at doing is big uh, infrastructure projects, big impressive gestures. They, have, they can bring a lot of capital to bear. So that's something Wendy has been quite impressive at uh, building those relationships. And I think I'm hopeful that uh, if we get our act together as, as a as a industry, we can actually do some impressive long lasting things through some of those relationships over time. So uh, if you're not familiar with the LSBC, what we do broadly, I mean, networking, obviously, in, albeit virtual, but uh, uh, helping companies line up investments, training, nurturing, advocacy, government relationships. And it's not, just, it's not just industry. We're not an industry association. It's academia, it's government, it's all sorts of, uh, of other organizations in the sector. We're bringing them all together to, uh, to support and build and grow something really special here. So. With that, I would like to, uh, to uh, uh, encourage you to enjoy the show, celebrate the wonderful accomplishments of all of the impressive people here today, and uh, just, just relax and, and, uh, and uh, get ready to celebrate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott. You'd think that by now I would know to unmute myself before I start speaking. Um, so um, I just have a few greetings from some of our uh, government uh, officials that I wanna share with people. So the first is from, um, from the premier who was unable to attend today, but has sent a greeting, which I'll read. BC is proud, is, to be, is proud to be home to a dynamic, world-renowned life sciences community made up of scientists, physicians, engineers, technologists, clinicians, researchers, and entrepreneurs who have shown leadership and innovation throughout these challenging times. These awards honor the individuals and businesses who have worked tirelessly within this rapidly evolving industry in areas ranging from biopharmaceuticals to digital health. 
These outstanding recipients join a long list of industry professionals who have made an indelible mark, not only on their profession, but on the world. I want to express my appreciation to Life Sciences British Columbia and the sponsors who've made this event possible. As we work to end the COVID-19 pandemic and continue on the path to economic recovery, it is more important than ever to reward and recognize those who dedicate their lives to making life safer for everyone. Congratulations to all the winners. Your hard work and commitment is well deserving of this special recognition. Please accept my best wishes for a wonderful virtual award ceremony and your continued success. So thank you very much to Premier Horgan. Um, in addition to a message from the Premier, we're extremely pleased to welcome Minister Ravi Kallen, the Minister for Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation for British Columbia to say a few words. Minister Callan is a strong supporter of the life sciences sector. I think many of you have met him over the last 12 months as he's made a concentrated effort to go out into our life sciences community and meet people. So Minister Callan, a little bit about him. For those of you that don't know, he ran for office in 2017 provincial election, winning Delta North for the NDP and was reelected in 2020. He's been leading the province to build an inclusive, sustainable and innovative economic plan for the next 10 to 15 years. Before entering politics, Minister Callan had a career in banking. He's also an Olympian, having been on the Canadian men's field hockey team and is no stranger to working as a team. He participated in both the 2000 and 2008 Olympics. His training for the Olympics started in his early years as a defender in the Victoria Field Hockey League and on the junior team selection in 1999. Minister Callan also represented Canada at the Commonwealth Games, the Pan Am Games, winning silver in 2013 and gold in 2017. He was inducted into the Delta Sports Hall of Fame in 2013. So now we're going to hear directly from Minister Callan. Hello, this is Ravi Callan, the Minister of Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation for the province of British Columbia. I'm joining you today from the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. I'm so excited to be joining you for the 23rd annual Life Sciences BC Awards. There is so much to celebrate in BC's vibrant life sciences and biotech sector. I'm proud of the innovative thinking and development of leading technology in BC that is changing and saving lives. Because of your work in this sector, British Columbia is recognized around the world as a leading center for innovation and world-class life sciences companies. Over the past 18 months, BC has been in the forefront of global response to this pandemic. I wanna personally thank the BC-based companies, researchers, and others that have come together to fight COVID-19. Your hard work and commitment is making a difference in the lives of people in BC and around the world. Today, we recognize and honor the achievements and contributions of 11 outstanding individuals, companies, and organizations. These award recipients have demonstrated exceptional leadership and innovative thinking. They have driven forward with their vision and idea that have produced groundbreaking work in areas such as biopharmaceutical, biotechnology, medical devices, as well as digital health and more. Congratulations to each of you on your talented teams. On a final note, I would like to thank Wendy Hilbright and the team at Life Sciences BC for their leadership in life sciences sectors. I want to also thank all BC Life Sciences businesses, organizations for your commitment to finding solutions that make a positive difference in the people's lives. This sector continues to be a strong economic driver here in British Columbia now, and we see that well into the future. Thank you again. Congratulations to all the award recipients. Okay, so thanks to Minister Cowan for taking the time to uh, to greet everyone and congratulate everyone. As I said, he's a big supporter of the sector and um, you know sees the value of our sector both for its economic benefits but also for the innovative products, solutions, and services that are so critically important for our healthcare system. So now we move into the actual ceremony. Our first award this afternoon is the Deal of the Year Award sponsored by Canagore Genuity. Please welcome Jamie Brown, Managing Director, Head of Investment Banking, Western Canada, to present this award. Jamie. Thanks, Wendy. It's great to be back as a presenting sponsor of the LSBC Gala Awards. 
As a leading independent investment bank and a top 10 global equity underwriter, we're delighted to support BC's vibrant life sciences community. Our firm was proudly founded and remains headquartered here in Vancouver, but now operates all across Canada, US, UK, Europe, Middle East, Australia, and Asia with 2,300 employees and over 2 billion in annual revenues. We have built a firm on growth and innovation. I'm happy to say our life science practice group has been a key driver of our recent capital market success. With a dedicated team of life science professionals in Vancouver, Toronto, New York, Boston, San Francisco, our cross-border presence has culminated in a total of 360 finances in the last decade. And year to date, 2021, we've raised over 1.5 billion in equity, including book runner roles on a half a dozen NASDAQ IPOs. We've also had extensive experience with advisory assignments, having acted on over half a billion dollars worth of biotech transactions alone in the last year. Indeed, we like to be at the forefront of everything in therapeutics and genetics, novel drug development and groundbreaking medical devices, all made even better when the success is in our own backyard. So big thank you to Life Science BC and all the sponsors for the superb showcase of BC's best in this critical industry. The deal year of the board isn't just about a big financial win. It honors the province's most significant life sciences deal, a deal that has demonstrated excellence in mergers, acquisitions, transaction or collaborations, and has leveraged an opportunity to accelerate the corporate goals and visions of the company. The award honors an individual or an organization that over the last 12 months has positively impacted life sciences sector in British Columbia. Organizations eligible to win this award include, but are not limited to the areas of law, finance, accounting, economic development, incubation, clinical research, and consulting. And I dare to say it's fitting for Canaccord Genuity to present this award as we were lucky enough to be involved in the initial capital formation of this winner of the Deal of the Year Award, Arinia Pharmaceuticals. Arinia is a fully integrated biopharmaceutical company focused on delivering therapies to treat targeted patient populations that are impacted by serious diseases with a high unmet medical need. The company's global headquarters are in Victoria, British Columbia, with a commercial hub in Rockville, Maryland. The company's oral therapy is now available to treat patients in the United States. And the company's collaboration license agreement with Otsuka Pharmaceutical gives treatment hope to patients with autoimmune disease, lupus nephritis. Approved in January this year by the FDA, the oral therapy is safe and effective for one of the most serious complications of SLE. Now let's watch our award winner's video describing their journey in their own words. Arenia is a company that's primarily focused on less common autoimmune and renal diseases. Our core area of focus right now, we've recently received, received approval for a drug called Lupkinus for the treatment of lupus nephritis. 30 years ago, lupus nephritis was treated by a, a drug called cyclophosphamide, which some of you may be familiar with. And cyclophosphamide is a very toxic oncology drug that is basically a cytotoxic agent. 90% uh, of these patients with lupus and lupus nephritis are women, and, and, and cyclophosphamide is known to cause infertility in these patients. So a major advance forward is getting rid of cyclophosphamide in this lupus nephritis treatment paradigm and replacing it with a multi-targeted therapy for Arenia, I would say, as the team has expanded from, you know, the start three of us to now over 300 people, I would say the most most crowning achievement is our January 22nd approval of loop kinase for the treatment of lupus nephritis. Uh, there will be tens of thousands of patients that will be helped by this drug long term. This cluster is is world class, and people are are noticing that more and more. And um, we're committed to staying here. I think that Arini can really be an anchor company. A lot of experienced manager management that has come here from all over the world. We can act as mentors and just provide that core uh, growth and core support mindset for the local biotech uh, sector. You know, we do things in business. 
uh, and in science, and you, you, you can't make major innovations uh, one without the other. 30 years ago, QLT was it, right? And, and they were almost the only game in town. And the number of entrepreneurs that launched themselves out of that organization is mind boggling. And the number of names out there that have supported the sector over time. Um, and now we're, we're even in, in a better spot. You'll see in the near future that we'll close a number of earlier stage deals to build our pipeline and keep investing locally and um, hiring people locally. And I can see nothing but growth for Arrhenia long term and we'll be proud supporters of the local life sciences uh, cluster. Okay, so why don't we introduce Mike now to accept the award on behalf of Irinia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mike Martin of Irinia Pharmaceuticals. Thank you very much, uh, Jamie. Uh, almost a decade ago um, with us visiting the offices in Vancouver, trying to figure out how we were going to um, uh, fix and rebuild. So you know, I, I remember those conversations and those lunches. So thank you very much to Canaccord uh, in the early days, especially. Um, I wanted to take this op opportunity to thank uh, Life Sciences BC and, and the selection committee uh, for choosing Arenia and the Atsuka deal as deal of the year. Thank you very much. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity. Um, I'm sure somebody else will take this opportunity as well, but just to really thank those people behind the scenes of this event and this organization. Uh, of course, um, Wendy, William, Ryan, Amanda, Peter, Tim, Steve, thank you very much for all that you do. Um, it does not go unrecognized. Um, and last but not least, um, with particular thanks to Ferris for sponsoring this event and sponsoring the awards. Thank you very much. Um, I'd also like to, to add in receiving this award, um, you know, something that, that most of you already know is that business development and licensing and M&As, it's, it's not a person that does it. It's not a company that does it. It's really a village that does it. And it's really, really important that that all, everybody has the oars in the water and are pulling in the same direction to get a deal done. Um, and when you have that, and when you have supportive leadership, deals can get done. Uh, and I mentioned uh, not only the Atsuka deal, but uh, what we call internally as the Riptide deal and the Thunderbolt deal to build out our company's um, corporate pipeline, uh, which will really be the future of the organization. Um, and so in saying that, it's not a person, but a village. I would like to thank our entire internal BDRC, which is short for Business Development Re Review Committee. I, I won't name all the folks, but again, it is a village. Um, and seeing as how I uh, have just won, a, won an award um, and I've been in this business for over 25 years, um, my mother always told me, uh, don't ever forget where you came from. So I'm just gonna take this opportunity to impart a little bit of, um, of wisdom uh, with regards to my experience in, in business development and, uh, and licensing over the last couple of decades. Um, to those younger folks that are out there in business development and licensing and, and trying to do deals, I just don't want you to worry about the length of your deal sheet or the number of deals um, you have on that deal sheet. Um, what's really, really important um, is those deals that you don't do or you don't get across the line to a signature. Those are often the deals that you learn the most from. And so that's just my message to um, the next generation of deal makers. Keep plugging away, working hard, uh, and just keep learning. So thank you again to everybody for this event, and thank you very much for the award. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Canaccord, uh, Genuity, and congrats to Mike, and as you appropriately called out to the entire Arinia team, um, on winning this uh, very prestigious award. Our next award this afternoon is the Strategic Life Sciences Partner of the Year Award. It is sponsored by IACOR. So please join me in welcoming Nadine Boger, president of IACOR to present this award. Nadine. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Wendy. And thank you to your, thanks to the organization Life Sciences BC and uh, every all the partners that are uh, joining uh, this great event. 
So we at Iroquois, uh, we're very excited to be part of this, uh, this opportunity as a sponsor, being a center of excellence in commercialization and research, uh, specializing in uh, drug discovery and development based in Montreal. So we've had, we're really one of the centers, uh, the, one of the centers really centering on uh, accelerating, uh, you know, the development of projects coming out of projects uh, coming out of uh, universities from across the country, so that we can better increase their value in, in order to have exciting exits, either for uh, through partnerships with pharma companies or creation of uh, creation of uh, small companies. So uh, this is, again, uh, I'm very excited to be here and to be presenting the Strategic Life Sciences Partner of the Year Award, which acknowledges the outstanding contributions of our partners who have significantly impacted the British Columbia life sciences sector, uh, sciences sector in 2020. This award highlights the positive engagement uh, achieved through active agreements and collaborations in the life sciences sector in British Columbia. Uh, I'm particularly, particularly thrilled to announce this year's uh, winner since we've been collaborating for a number of years and we've had the opportunity to experience firsthand the, the depth of scientific business knowledge and flexibility of this organization. So without further ado, without further ado I introduce you to Novateur Ventures. Novateur Ventures provides innovation for life science virtually anywhere and anytime. With a diverse advisory network of seasoned experts, Novata services clients ranging from early stage startups to global players around the globe in the biotech, pharmaceutical, medical device, and digital health field. Novata Ventures has become the main go-to partner for BC-based startups that need technical resources to progress their therapeutic diagnostic and or device products into clinical trials and into the commercial marketplace. And as I mentioned, they go beyond BC, so with, uh, with, Quebec, uh, with Quebec partners as IMCO. Furthermore, Novata has been a strong supporter of the life sciences community within BC for many years, as well as mentoring life science startups. Ali Ardakani, Managing Director of Novata, serves as Vice Chair of Life Sciences BC, Entrepreneur in Residence in Innovate Calgary, as well as on Edmary's advisory team for Edmary's Academy, and has been an associate in Creative Destruction Lab for the past three years. Now, let's watch our award winner's video describing their journey in their own words. So 30 years ago, actually July of 1991, my family and I immigrated to Canada. I knew I loved sciences. Um, I actually started volunteering at Lionsgate Hospital, Evergreen House, helping with the elderly. And I was doing that every Friday night. There were uh, 97 candy stripers and three cadets, and I was one of the cadets. I loved helping people. I loved seeing um, how innovative medicines were helping people. We started Novator, uh, but the with the thesis that the success and failure of startups is correlated with one thing, and that's people. Having experienced advisors that have both experience and network. I'm most proud of the work we've done at Novator, helping multiple companies, entrepreneurs, scientists, bring their innovative devices and therapeutics uh, to clinical trials um, here in BC and around the world. Uh, Vancouver and British Columbia as a whole um, is now globally recognized for some of the best companies around the world in the area of therapeutics and medical devices. So being able to win this award in a competitive space is very exciting. Being able to recognize by your colleagues, I'm hoping it shows that people have seen our authenticity and intent to help um, a lot of startups here and around the world. Whether they're politicians, governments, and investors, they realize that if you don't invest in healthcare, you can't have anything else. You may have airlines, you may have oil and gas, you may have real estate, but everything will shut down if you don't have good healthcare. I predict in a few, in, in a few years, you're gonna have 
cures and vaccines for HIV. And that's thanks to the mRNA technology that we had to fast forward and bring it to patients around the world. And because of that, you know, sacrifice and the work that people did around the world, now we can use these technologies and hopefully treat a lot of other diseases. So thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ali Ardakani of Novateur Ventures. Ali, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Nadine, and um, no one better than you and Iricor to sponsor this award. Um, I've had the pleasure and opportunity to work with uh, uh, Nadine and her wonderful team, Stephen Klein and others at Iricor for a number of years, and we're delighted, and you're going to see some very exciting things coming out of that fantastic organization. Um, this award is very meaningful to me personally because I founded Novotor Ventures at, at the Life Sciences BC Salmon Barbecue back in May of 2016. I think some of you who are right now uh, watching this award may remember, um, and we've come a long way. I want to thank um, the Life Sciences team um, that works around the clock. This is a very small team, but extremely tactical and smart. Um, the, the board, um, our members and sponsors, to, to make this organization what it is. Um, I also wanna really uh, express my immense gratitude to over hundred advisors that have worked and are continuing to work in Novator with our clients in BC, Canada, and globally. This award is dedicated to each and every one of them. Also uh, to our clients and our portfolio companies for allowing to serve them. They're the ones in forefront of bringing meaningful medicines and devices to patients worldwide. And let's not forget, we're all doing this to make a meaningful impact in human health globally. Last but not least, unfortunately, she's not here picking up the kids and my kids are not here, um, but I wanna thank my life partner, uh, my wife, Nikta, um, and my three children for their support. My wife's guidance, intelligence, and support has given me a lot of ammunition and energy to build Novator. So thank you, Nikta. Thank, thank you for all of you for being here today and celebrating this with us. Um, I really appreciate this and we hope we can um, bring these medicines and innovative devices to patients worldwide together. Thank you. Thanks, Ali, um, and congratulations. Um, and you do dress up very well. <laughs> uh, please make sure you check the chat, Ali. You are getting flooded with congratulations from many, uh, many people that know you well. So please, uh, and everyone else, please continue to engage through the chat. Um, I'd like to thank ICOR for sponsoring this award. It's great to have you as part of our award ceremony. Our next award is a one-time award, the Global Impact Award, and it's sponsored by Pfizer. I'd like to welcome Fabian Paquette, Vaccines Canada Lead and General Manager for Pfizer Canada to present this award. Thank you, Wendy, and good afternoon, everyone. As the Vaccines Lead for Pfizer Canada, I am honored to be part of this event and would like to thank Wendy and Life Sciences BC for inviting Pfizer to contribute to this special recognition. BC Life Sciences Innovation has been globally recognized for addressing the unique challenges that arose as a result of the pandemic. We saw BC take a leadership role in the development of vaccines, therapeutics, medical devices and diagnostics, and digital health solutions. While many BC companies and individuals have contributed greatly, Life Sciences BC would like to recognize the outstanding efforts made within our sector. The second of the two special impact awards for 2020 that celebrate leadership during this time is for a company that Pfizer is really proud to be associated with. In early 2020, when the SARS-CoV-2 virus began to be understood and its lethal effects were spreading to every corner of our planet, there was a massive effort in the biopharmaceutical life science community to find healthcare solutions. One such solution was the discovery of a safe and effective mRNA vaccine. The incredible complex story of the research, development, and manufacturing behind the mRNA vaccine involved many committed individuals and organizations. The partnerships behind the vaccine have enabled over 2 billion individuals around the world to be vaccinated 
and way more to come. Founded in February 2009, Vancouver-based Aquatus Therapeutics is a private biotechnology company that specializes in the development of delivery systems for nucleic acid therapeutics based on lipid nanoparticles. Aquatus partners with pharmaceutical companies, biotechnology organizations, and academic institutes to advance nucleic acid therapeutics to the clinical trial phase and to the marketplace. The team works with partners to develop new therapies to address unmet clinical needs based on the internationally recognized capabilities and delivery technology developed by Equitus. As a global leader in the lipid nanotechnology, Equitus has demonstrated global impact through its role in one of the largest and fastest global vaccine program ever delivered as part of its partnership with Pfizer-BioNTech and the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, let's watch our award winner's video describing their journey in their own words. Conventional vaccines have been based on uh, either killed or attenuated viruses, prevalent technology that we've had you know, for the last couple of hundred years. Vaccines uh, using mRNA technology can be developed more rapidly. We know exactly what the immune response is against. And as I say, it's only against one particular protein that we've selected from the virus. There's an absolute requirement for a mechanism to protect the mRNA after it's administered and to then carry it into our cells so that it can work. And, and that's the technology that Acuitas um, specializes in, lipid nanoparticles that protect and deliver the messenger RNA. Uh, we've been working with partners you know, for several years, including developing um, mRNA vaccines uh, for other diseases, in particular uh, for, for rabies. We were fortunate in being um, very well positioned to support our partners in developing a vaccine against COVID-19 when the need arose. One of the biggest challenges we had, however, is we were also in a situation where we needed to lock down. We needed to protect our employees, uh, basically prioritize access to the facility to only those people that were supporting the, the vaccine work and needed to be there. And we also ran shifts so that we didn't have too many people in the lab at any one time. And, Everybody was then working seven days a week, you know, as many hours in the day as they could, recognizing that a day saved in terms of getting the vaccine available sooner could save lives. You know, I think everybody in the company would say it's still hard to get your head around um, uh, the impact that their work has, has made um, uh, globally. Um, but as I say, we really very much appreciate the, the recognition and, and the award um, from Life Sciences BC. This is an overnight success that's been decades in the making, as, as people say. We happen to be uniquely well positioned to respond um, to the COVID-19 pandemic based on work that had been decades in the making. You know, one of the things that, that I would uh, say to, to young scientists, young researchers, is how important um, collaboration is to advances in science and uh, contributing expertise from acuitous, combining that with expertise on messenger RNA design and synthesis from BioNTech, expertise on, on scale up of manufacture and distribution um, by Pfizer. Um, and it really was a, a global collaboration that, that allowed the vaccine to be, um, you know, made available so so quickly. As a Canadian who has benefited from their research, I'm really honored to present this Global Impact Award to Equitas Therapeutics. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Tom Madden. Uh, thank you, Fabian, for that introduction. Uh, and, and first, I'd like to start by, um, uh, in particular, thanking Wendy and her team for all their hard work uh, in putting on this event today. Uh, we really appreciate it. I'm, I'm sure everybody else does. Um, I, I'm delighted and proud um, to accept this award uh, from Life Sciences BC. And I'm accepting it uh, on behalf of all of the women and men at Acuitas who actually did the work. Uh, as 
noted uh, in the in the video, um, uh, everybody worked incredibly hard to support our partners, BioNTech and Pfizer, to bring the the vaccine candidate rapidly into the clinic and to the to the to, to uh, globally address this this need. Um, and at a time when the risks from the disease itself were poorly understood, um, so I really am incredibly proud uh, of all of the team we have at Acuitas. Um, it's it been very difficult for us to sort of truly appreciate the global magnitude of our, of our contribution uh, to addressing this pandemic. Um, and it's it's interesting that um, the contribution really only becomes apparent uh, when there's a personal connection. Um, it's been uh, incredible um, uh, when uh, uh, researchers, uh, people at, at Acuitas, share stories of, of how their parents and grandparents uh, received their first vaccine shot and how relieved they were at the protection it afforded. Um, also, when friends who had been uh, working uh, in hospital ICU uh, units for months, you know, witnessing the, the terrible consequences of COVID-19, um, reached out to send selfies of their first vaccination, uh, and also, again, you know, noted how important this was for them in terms of recognizing a way forward out of the disease. Um, so uh, as I say, uh, it's really had, has been those, those sort of personal connections that have brought um, uh, the importance of this work um, into, into clear uh, focus for us. I think one of the positive outcomes from the pandemic uh, was the opportunity to tell Canadians how uh, Canadian scientists and Canadian companies, uh, and particularly companies in, in British Columbia, uh, were playing key roles in the development of vaccines and therapeutics uh, to address COVID-19. Um, we, we typically hear little about what's happening in, in Canada in the biotechnology um, arena. And so this was an excellent opportunity for all Canadians um, to recognize and take pride in our industry and its global impact. Impact and so again, I just like to thank uh, Life Sciences BC for this award, um, which is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, and uh, congratulations to Acuitas, and uh, thank you Pfizer for uh, supporting the award. Tom, I could not agree with you more that um, we've this has provided a fantastic opportunity for us to tell the story of how BC world class innovation can be impactful across the globe. So congratulations to you and your team. And I think probably almost every one of us um, is thankful for uh, the collaboration that resulted in vaccines that I'm guessing most of us have, have um, had that are participating today. Our, um, our next award is um, sponsored by Janssen and it is the Leadership Impact Award. I'd like to introduce Dr. Abele Ola, the Vice President of Medical Affairs for Janssen to present this award. Thank you, Wendy, and hello everyone. At Johnson & Johnson, we believe good health is the foundation of vibrant lives, thriving communities, and progress. We are guided by our credo, where our first responsibility is to the doctors, nurses, and patients, mothers and fathers, and all others who use our products and services. Our ultimate goal is to help people live healthy lives, a goal for which we have been innovating for more than 50 years. So at Janssen, our vision includes leadership beyond the valuable in innovative medicines and services to the delivery of sustainable and measurable health outcomes for patients as a partner in the Canadian healthcare ecosystem. We're committed to going beyond our immediate business interests by contributing to advancing health and well-being in the communities in which we live and work with health equity as the foundation for our approach. We won't stop until new ideas turn into medical solutions for patients in need. So I am so proud to be here with you this evening and share in the recognition for the innovations and achievements of BC's life sciences community. Now, given the unique events over the past 18 months, Life Sciences BC would like to recognize the extraordinary efforts made within our sector. Two special impact awards for 2020 celebrate leadership shown during the global pandemic. The Leadership Impact Award for an individual recognizes the role that Dr. Mel Cragston has played over the past year and a half. 
Dr. Krajden is the medical director of the BC Center for Disease Control Public Health Laboratory and the medical health head of hepatitis at the BC Center for Disease Control. He's also a professor of pathology and laboratory medicine at the University of British Columbia. As medical director of the public health laboratory at the BC Center for Disease Control, he played a key leadership role during the pandemic response in this province. As a member of the Federal COVID Immunity Task Force and other COVID-19 testing and vaccine panels. In August 2020, he was appointed as a member of the Order of British Columbia for his contributions to public health. Now let, let's watch our award winners video describing his journey in his own words. just been completely relentless. It's just unbelievable to, 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 to have gone through this. And, and most people are ex completely exhausted. In 2016, when I began uh, as uh, the head of uh, the BC CDC Public Health Lab, I was working with Perry Kendall and uh, Bonnie Henry to develop uh, a kind of strategy with the Ministry of Health of, of what a public health lab needs to do. And the first was having the right centralization and decentralization of testing. The second element was to have a critical mass of, of people who were engaged in day-to-day -day service work. And those people were also to be part of an academic hub and indeed were part of a UBC a training program. And the those three elements together uh, create the ability to anticipate and respond to threats. And the last element, of course, is data. And, and those were what was brought to bear when uh, this uh, pandemic evolved. So we were very quick to, within 10 days of the release of the sequences, to produce uh, a test uh, that we still use today and uh, share that test with frontline laboratories. We were quick to adopt the use of whole genome sequencing that allowed us to show that the initial cases in British Columbia were not from China. They were, in, the, in fact, from the U.S. or from Europe. We were also uh, able to uh, recognized that we needed to have data and we created a database called Plover that actually brought in real-time data of who was tested and where they were and that was in anticipation that there might be a vaccine and then you would need to be able to track whether someone who got vaccinated then got infected or not. What's clear is pandemic response, it's really a global village trying to work together and so we have to reflect on how lucky we are in British Columbia to have a vibrant life sciences community. Uh, and I think that the work that is involved in pandemics is very similar to the work that needs to improve healthcare. And we need to create uh, and forge better ties between public health, clinicians, academics, industry. And the other thing we learned from this pandemic is the fragility of the global supply chain, plastics, reagents, and I think that it really behooves us to learn from this pandemic and uh, transform how we respond as a society. Congratulations, Dr. Krajden. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Mel Krajden. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I am deeply honored to receive this award. As a medical student, I was introduced to a patient with an unknown virus. And then I watched how hard it is to overcome the fears of an unknown virus. In 1989, the virus was named hepatitis C. And 30 years later, it was curable. Hepatitis C profoundly shaped my understanding of how transformative the life sciences can be. And it also taught me a lesson 
about how people react to unknown agents. There is no black, there's no white, but many shades of gray. For COVID, what would normally take science and humanity 30 years has taken about 20 months and counting. Never before have we seen so much information and disinformation. BC's vibrant life sciences sector, as you have all heard, has contributed to COVID mRNA vaccines, therapeutics, and more. Led by Bonnie Henry and our political leaders, evidence-based public health measures were used to try and balance economic and societal needs. As we all know, it's not been easy, nor has it been perfect. But BC is indeed a global beacon in its response. I want to take a stab at predicting the COVID endgame. COVID can only be tamed by vaccines or immunity after infection and is likely to remain with us. The risk of developing severe COVID after vaccination is very low. This means that we will need to relearn how to gauge the relative risk of COVID in a vaccinated person against life's other risks while respecting that people have different risk tolerances. Vaccines prevent transmission and severe disease, but the Delta variant is so transmissible that COVID infections will continue, even in those vaccinated. If about 90% of British Columbians are vaccinated, COVID will become like a common cold for most of us. The unintended consequences from our COVID response are massive. So keeping schools and universities open and safe will be critical for developing tomorrow's life sciences leaders. We will need them to tackle climate change, an even greater problem. Time does not permit me to speak of the litany of things that have been left and the partnerships that have been left undone, which we will still need to end this pandemic of the unvaccinated. But an important lesson is that in our global village, we are only safe when everyone is safe. I want to thank all my colleagues whose shoulders I've stood on and my wife and children who learned to tolerate my eccentricities. And turn over to you, Wendy, thank you and your team for this event and this award. Thank you very much. Um, lots of really important um, words that you've, just, that you've just said. And I wanna turn your comment about a beacon um, back to you because you have truly been a beacon through this pandemic. and. We are all grateful and very much appreciative for that and have benefited from it. Um, I would like to now move to uh, the next award, which is uh, the Genome BC Award for Scientific um, Excellence. And uh, returning again is Dr. John Shepard, who is going to present the award. Thank you, Wendy. I am honored to be here today virtually on behalf of Genome BC to present this award. Uh, Genome British Columbia is a not-for-profit organization supporting world-class research and innovation in genomics and fostering a globally competitive life sciences sector to deliver sustainable benefits for BC, Canada, and beyond. Over the last 20 years, Genome BC has generated over $1.1 billion of investment into our province. And we are delighted to recognize the local excellence that flows from that as we are with this award today. Genome BC is dedicated to improving the lives of people throughout BC by advancing healthcare, in addition to addressing environmental and natural resource challenges. Furthermore, we work hard to integrate genomics into society by supporting responsible research and innovation and increasing the understanding and appreciation of the life sciences among educators, students, and the public. The Genome BC Award for Scientific Excellence is presented to an individual, group, or company who has received significant national and international recognition in the fields of genomics, 
proteomics, bioinformatics, systems biology in the past year. And our winner this year is Dr. Michael Rossello. Dr. Rossello is a professor in the Department of Biology at the University of BC Okanagan in Kelowna. And the work in his lab is at the interface of ecology and evolution, where his research has impacted biodiversity conservation in over 10 countries spanning four continents and across species as diverse, pun intended, as Galapagos tortoises, sockeye salmon, Amazon parrots, Cuban crocodiles, and Demur tigers. Dr. Rossello's research has made significant contributions to conservation genomics. This includes explaining how hybridization and population size changes affect diversity, understanding how invasive species establish and spread, and advancing strategies for captive breeding and repatriation. Much of this work has been successfully translated into diversification management action. This award recognizes his contributions for conservation genomics across the world, and we're particularly proud to recognize his work in the BC area with the sockeye salmon in the west coast of Canada and in the Pacific Northwest. So let's hear what Dr. Rossello has to say in his own words. Thirty years ago, I was just getting my driver's license, just coming to the realization that I wasn't going to be the future shortstop for the New York Yankees. So it was actually not long after that, that as an undergraduate, I had my first experience in a molecular biology lab. Uh, so it was about that time that uh, Professor uh, Marie Simovich introduced me to the emerging discipline of conservation genetics. And that was really the light bulb moment for me uh, that really set me on my career path. Biodiversity uh, is uh, something that has uh, been generated for millions of years. Uh, and so we're seeing those uh, products uh, throughout the fossil record and uh, into the tremendous diversity that we see today, as well as the, the documented uh, declines. I like to think of biodiversity as, as a good in itself, um, but there are also a, a lot of arguments uh, for its importance, both in terms of ecosystem structure and function, but also the, the benefits that uh, they provide to humanity. Well, it was a pleasant surprise to uh, receive the Genome BC Award for Scientific Excellence. I feel really fortunate to have had the opportunity to build my research program uh, within this age of genomics. Seeing our research results translated into meaningful conservation practice, contributing to species at risk status assessments, improving invasive species management, uh, guiding captive breeding and reintroductions, uh, and in forming freshwater fisheries management. There's still uh, much work to be done. Uh, we, we have these pressing in environmental issues uh, that continue to come to the forefront. You can see the, the times we're living in now uh, where climate change uh, seems to be manifesting in real time. Uh, and so the impacts on uh, biodiversity, uh, we're just beginning to understand that. You know, it's my belief that uh, genetics and genomics can provide a really important tool uh, for helping to reconstruct, you know, what's going on and hopefully provide some information for uh, a path forward uh, for both managing and, and stemming the loss of biodiversity. It's my pleasure to present the Genome BC Award for Scientific Excellence to Dr. Michael Rossello. Michael. Well, uh, thank you, John, uh, Genome BC and Life Sciences BC for this award uh, and to the organizers of this event. Uh, I'm truly honored to be in the company of uh, the other awardees. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with Genome BC over the years and contribute in a, a small way to their efforts in positioning British Columbia as a global leader in genome enabled research. Uh, today, I just would like to accept this award on behalf of all the students, postdocs, and outside collaborators who have been really true partners in the research generated out of my lab over the years. Uh, without them uh, and the funders, uh, including Genome BC, uh, none of this work would have been possible. So once again, uh, thank you for this award. Thank you, Genome BC, and huge congratulations, Dr. Rossello. Um, 
Now we are going to move to our next uh, award, which is the Michael Smith Foundation for Health Research Audrey J. Tingle Prize. And uh, presenting that award is going to be Dr. Ellis, Eleanor Wilson, the chair of the board of directors. Eleanor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wendy. This year is the 20th anniversary of the Michael Smith Foundation for Health Research, and it has been a challenging year. The last year has reinforced the need for and commitment to a future where health research plays an even stronger role in improving people's lives. So it gives me great pleasure to present the Aubrey J. Tingle Prize. This prize is presented to a British Columbia clinician scientist whose work in health research is internationally recognized and has had a significant impact on advancing research and the uptake of evidence to improve health and the health system in BC and globally. This year's winner is Dr. Ruth Grinnell. Dr. Grinnell, a psychologist, is a professor in the Division of Neonatology of the Pediatrics Department at the University of British Columbia and a senior scientist in the BC Children's Hospital Research Institute. Her early work in measurement of facial indicators of infant pain made a landmark impact on the field of pain assessment and has been adapted and used worldwide, both clinically and for research. With funding by the NIH and the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, she has published more than 200 refereed journal articles and 34 book chapters. More recently, she is known internationally as the leader in the long-term effects of neonatal pain in infants born very preterm at 24 to 32 weeks. Dr. Grunau's multidisciplinary research has shown that there are long-term consequences of daily procedural pain in these infants at a time of rapid brain development and programming of, of stress systems. These findings have impacted neonatal hospital care worldwide. Dr. Grunau's work on pain recognition and management in infants improves day-to-day -day life for society's most vulnerable during NICU and early life interventions to lessen the impact of chronic pain and medical interventions on brain development. I invite you to watch the following video and hear from Dr. Grunau herself. So after completing my PhD in 1985, I went to um, a position at Children's Hospital in the neonatal follow-up program when it was established in 88. I came into the Institute at the very beginning and uh, without Dr. Tingle and without the um, Michael Smith Scholar Award, I would not be where I am today. So I really want to express my gratitude. My role as a psychologist was to um, assess children born extremely tiny. Infants born two to four months early undergo around 10 invasive procedures daily while hospitalized for weeks to months during a period of the most rapid brain development and programming of stress systems. Our work has had a major clinical impact on neonatal intensive care, identifying pain stress as a modifiable risk factor with long-term consequences, and thereby the importance of pain stress management. So while studies of development of very premature babies have shown persisting problems through to adulthood, our work has, has shown that there's aspects of parental involvement, such as sensitivity to child cues during simple teaching tasks in toddlerhood, in um, early childhood, can to some extent ameliorate the adverse uh, contribution of the early pain and stress. Development is highly plastic. The brain is developing throughout this period. And there's no question that the uh, environment that the child is raised in can have um, very positive ameliorative effects. The new children's hospital, NICU, was built 
for uh, accommodating and facilitating parent involvement with their babies. The importance of this has grown from many directions, including our work on the long-term effects of pain and how important it is to have parents doing skin-to-skin -skin care and uh, helping parents reduce, reduce the baby's stress. Improving the lives of preterm infants at this point is improving their neurodevelopmental outcomes. And I am very fortunate, together with my multidisciplinary collaborators, to have been able to add to the understanding of factors that contribute to these children's development and uh, hopefully will lead to more optimal outcomes in the long run. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Grinnell to say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Wilson, um, for your generous introduction. I'm thrilled and honored to receive this award. Especially, I would like to thank Dr. Aubrey Tingle, who played a key role in the establishment of my research career early on. Thank you also to the Life Sciences BC and the organizers of today's event. I'd like to express my appreciation to the Michael Smith Foundation for Health Research for this award and for my Senior Scholar Award in 2002 that launched my career. And thank you for tremendous support from the BC Research Institute for Children's and Women's Health over the past 20 years, the Pediatrics Department at UBC and my division neonatology. My work is truly multidisciplinary, and I want to express heartfelt appreciation to my colleagues, including Drs. Joanne Weinberg, Michael Whitfield, and Senna, Stephen Miller, and so many others, too numerous to name at this point. I'm forever grateful to my fantastic students, postdocs, and research staff who made it all happen, and for the invaluable support of the clinicians and staff in the neonatal intensive care unit and neonatal follow-up program at BC Women's Hospital. I'm truly indebted to the families who participate in our studies and return uh, year after year for longitudinal studies. Lastly, I would like to deeply thank my husband and my four children for their support and for putting up with my research bug all these years. Again, thank you very much for this prestigious award, which means a great deal. Congratulations, um, very well deserved. And it's wonderful to hear that you had that personal connection with Aubrey J. Tingle. It makes, I'm sure, I'm sure it makes it even that much more special. Thank you to uh, the Michael Smith Foundation for Health Research for continuing to uh, support this annual award. Our next award goes to the Emerging Life Sciences Company of the Year, and I'm thrilled to be able to say it's sponsored by Chinook Therapeutics. Please join me in welcoming Alison Gaw, the Executive Director of Corporate and Business Development, to present this award. Thank you, Wendy. And, and first off, I'd just really like to thank Life Sciences BC for having me here to represent Chinook Therapeutics and present the Emerging Life Sciences Company of the Year Award. This year's Building on Excellence theme really resonates closely with Chinook's mission and values, as well as our hope of making dialysis and transplant unnecessary for people living with kidney diseases. When we formed Chinook in 2019 with a core research team here in Vancouver, we wanted to address the huge unmet need in kidney diseases, an area with very few targeted therapeutic treatment options available. Kidney disease has been a tough area for drug development in the past, but as we heard earlier this afternoon from Arinia with their drug, Lupincus for lupus nephritis, progress is being made. So it is a very exciting time and we're full of hope for the future of research in this field. Since Chinook received the 2020 Emerging Life Science Company of the Year Award, we have made significant progress across our pipeline of programs, particularly in the clinic. Our lead clinical program, atracentin, an endothelin receptor antagonist, is now in the phase three aligned trial, currently enrolling patients with IJ nephropathy, and the phase two affinity trial, currently enrolling patients with proteinuria glomerular diseases. 
Bion 1301 is an anti-April monoclonal antibody, is being evaluated in a phase 1-2 trial for IgA nephropathy. And we're also advancing CHECK336, a small molecule discovered right here in our Vancouver labs, the treatment of primary hyperoxuria towards a planned IND submission and phase 1 trial in late 2021 and early 2022. In addition, we continue to advance research programs in other rare, severe chronic kidney diseases. At Chinook Therapeutics, we are passionate about, about creating a brighter future and improved quality of life for everyone affected by kidney diseases. Just look at our NASDAQ tick ticker symbol, which is KDNY. We will continue to build on the excellent foundation of researchers, both here in Vancouver and abroad. And thank you to Life Sciences BC for hosting this event and for everything you do for the life sciences sector. Chinook is honored to be a part of this event and play our small role in the community. As a recipient of last year's award, I'm thrilled to present the 2021 Emerging Life Sciences Company of the Year Award, which recognizes an early stage life sciences company, which although not yet achieving commercial success, has demonstrated outstanding performance and realized significant milestones in the past year and is positioned well for potential future commercial success. I'm proud to announce that this year's recipient is Notch Therapeutics. Notch Therapeutics develops renewable stem cell derived immunotherapies. Having developed a proprietary platform, there is now the potential to commercially manufacture stem cell derived immunotherapies without needing to use a patient's own immune cells. Giving developing hemopoietic cells the right signals to predictably direct development simplifies manufacturing meaning that immune cells can be produced at scale without animal components or feeder cell lines. In addition to developing a robust pipeline of next generation cellular immunotherapies, Notch recently closed a 85 million US dollar Series A financing and has grown its employee base to approximately 70 employees, 35 of which are here based in BC. Though I wouldn't be surprised if those numbers are already out of date at the rate that they've been growing. Over the next few years, Notch will continue to expand its Vancouver headquarters with satellite offices in Toronto, Ontario, and Seattle. Now let's watch the video prepared describing their journey in their own words. Just over 30 years ago, I got my first job in biotech with one of the first inaugural uh, biotech companies in Vancouver. Quadrologic Technologies, later known as QLT. So what Notch has done is developed a first-in-class system for generating T cells from an unlimited source of stem cells and engineering these cells so that the cells mature into functional T cells. There hasn't been any sort of major improvements to cancer therapy until this latest advance of CAR T cell therapies. Really what's been holding the cell therapy field back is how do you make cells? And Notch, as uh, we believe, has unlocked the potential to make unlimited therapeutic cells that could treat a range of diseases. So for each type of cancer, we can uh, swap in and out the targeting moiety into the same populations of cells. Yeah, 30 years ago, people were just starting to understand the potential of cells as therapeutics. Uh, fast forward 30 years, uh, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of clinical trials underway, approved therapies for uh, living cell products. Our team is an incredible set of people. All of us have been touched by cancer, and for me personally, what drives me and what's inspired me to help start this company is my father's struggle with cancer. Oh no, oh God, sorry. <laughs> he was diagnosed with brain cancer. Seeing what he went through and what he struggled with and creating better options for patients like him. I think that for us at Notch as a team, that's what really drives us and motivates us to work hard every day. You know, I'm extremely appreciative of Life Sciences BC recognizing Notch as Emerging Company of the Year. I just know how hard it is to build these companies and to bring good people together. Being recognized by that, I think, is just great for, for Notch. It's great for the local community, and it's really, you know, appreciated by me. And I predict in 30 years, we're going to have a whole slew of allogeneic T-cell therapies in the clinic and way better treatment opportunities for patients who are still suffering from cancer. Um, there has to be better options for them.
Okay, now let's welcome Peter and Shreya from Not to say a few words. Thank you, Alison, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're deeply honored and thrilled to receive this award. We founded Notch because we want to make better medicines that improve patients' lives by developing scalable stem cell derived immune cell therapies. We believe we can bring safe, effective, and accessible cancer treatments to patients. And so it's validating for our entire Nachos team to be recognized for the Emerging Life Sciences Company of the Year Award this afternoon. Thank you to Life Sciences BC for this acknowledgement and to everyone who's watching this event. Um, my co-founder and Nachos Chief Scientific Officer, Peter Zanstra, has a few more words. Thank you. Uh, so wonderful and humbling and, and motivating really to be here with this fantastic community and the fellow awardees here today. Very excited for this meaningful award and it's a real pleasure actually to be here with uh, Notch co-founder Shreya Shupa. On founding Notch, we set out to capture and keep innovation right here in Canada and help build our country's life sciences ecosystem and bring new therapies to Canadians and people globally. This is especially exciting for us in the area of cellular therapeutics, an area of fundamental world leading research strength for BC and for Canada. Our world-class team has the knowledge, the experience and the commitment necessary to try to bring universally available and accessible cell therapies to the people that need them most. And I couldn't be prouder. Shrey and I accept this award on behalf of all of our coworkers at Notch. Thank you very much, LSBC. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, congratulations um, to the entire Notch team. Um, you certainly give us reasons to feel really optimistic about the future of cell therapy. Um, and thank you very much to Chinook Therapeutics for, uh, for sponsoring the award. Nice that you were able to be on the other side of, of this award this year. Um, I would like to now um, welcome uh, the British Columbia Securities Commission. John Hines, the Director of Corporate Finance to present the next award, which is the Milton Wong Award for Leadership. Thanks, Wendy. Hi, everyone. On behalf of the BC Securities Commission, I'm honored to help recognize one individual's significant contributions to the BC life sciences community. As a securities regulator, part of the BC Securities Commission's mission is to foster a dynamic and competitive securities industry that provides investment opportunities and access to capital. One way we meet this goal is by working with investors and industry to evolve securities regulations as needs change. For example, following extensive public consultations, this week a new harmonized securities crowdfunding regime became available across Canada giving life science startups another tool to raise money. When you are raising money, please think of the BCSC as a resource. Check out the BCSC website, bcsc.bc.ca, or give us a call. Now I'd like to provide some background about the Milton Wong Award for Leadership. Milton Wong was an inspiration an incredible man and a tireless supporter of life sciences in British Columbia. This award pays tribute to his memory and to his significant and long-standing contribution to the life sciences industry. The award recognizes an individual working in life sciences in BC who has demonstrated a significant contribution to the development of the sector. The award highlights the accomplishments of a person who has impacted and strengthened relationships with external supporters and advocated for the community. This year's winner, Northview Ventures and Doug Jansen. Northview Ventures under Doug Jansen's leadership has provided strong and consistent investment and strategic consulting support to the BC life sciences sector, contributing greatly to the community's success for many years. For the past 20 years, Doug has held leadership positions in a number of life sciences companies. He's co-founder and managing director of Northview Ventures, and he serves as chairman and CEO of Aqueous Pharmaceuticals. 
prior to Northview Ventures, Doug was president and CEO of Cardiome Pharma, raising over 300 million from investors, completing over 1 billion in licensing deals, and leading a partnership with Merck to bring Cardiome's lead product, Brinavest, through to clinical approval and marketing in the EU. Mr. Jansen currently serves on the boards of Aqueous Pharmaceuticals, Neovasc Inc., Perimeter Medical Imaging, and Synaptive Technologies. He's a former director of Abcelera and Re Renaissance Biosciences, a past chair of Life Sciences BC, has served as a director with Biotech Canada, and was a past winner of Business in Vancouver's Top 40 Under 40 Award. Doug was a seed investor in Abcelera, Precision Nanosystems, Synaptive, Perimeter, and Aqueous and he continues to actively support life sciences companies across Canada. Recent investments include Abdera, Elevate Farms, and Amp Human. Now let's watch our award winner's video describing his journey in his, in his words. About 30 years ago, I was probably in the pit pub at UBC having a beer after organic chemistry lab, trying to figure out how I was going to pay off all my student loans at the end of my bachelor's of science degree. I was much more interested in you know, what could we do with the knowledge we had than, uh, than you know, to keep learning more and more and more about a single ligand in a biochemistry PhD or something like that. With Northview, we really focus on helping companies with the business component of science. We're at a spot now where you know, we're pretty comfortable with building new businesses and helping others build businesses. You know, we've run biotech long enough. You know, we've run businesses long enough that we've made pretty well every mistake you can make, and we've learned how to fix most of them. We're really proud of the roster of companies that we've been able to help and partner with and grow. This is the hardest job on the planet. We're taking new science and applying it to human disease. Uh, we're then taking capital, often from investors who have a timeline in their mind. We're then putting into patients. We then get to go deal with regulators who, especially in the Canadian context, spend most of their time trying to prevent us from getting drugs to market. Then we have to deal with payers to actually make any money back. When you have 20 companies in the portfolio, there's something going wrong every day. <laughs> like, you just don't know it yet. I used to have hair. James Taylor at you know Precision, uh, we invested in him when they just got started, mostly because he didn't have hair. And uh, as I got to know Carl, you know, again, we were very early investors there, no hair. You know, I've never invested with Simon, but I bought him a whole bunch of beers. So I kind of feel like I've invested in him. And I think when you, you know, when you get to that level of baldness, you know, that really shows you've stressed your way right through the apex of stress. I think that's when you're ready to go and you know be successful in space. I've, uh, I've gone through 2 million miles on Air Canada in my career so far. All of those done the hard way and coach between Toronto and Vancouver or Montreal. Obviously I'm biased, but I think Vancouver is the most productive life sciences community in Canada by a long shot and the, and the, the area where the, the, the best investments outside of MedTech, the best investments come in healthcare here from, from Vancouver. Congratulations, Doug. Uh, I would now like to welcome our award recipient to say a few words. Hello, everyone. Um, just want to make sure you can hear me. Yes, we can yes. hear you. All right. Thank you. Um, Wendy, I'm just as bad as you at getting the mute button off at the right time. Uh, I want to start off by you know, one congratulating all the previous winners. Uh, it's amazing listening to, to what we as a community have accomplished, and uh, you know, I, it's just such an exciting time for us and what we're going to accomplish over the next ten years. You know, I uh, I got home from work on Thursday or, or on Wednesday, and uh, LSBC had delivered you know the the award package to the house, and uh, it was a beautiful basket with a bottle of champagne, a trophy, and uh, 
a box of chocolate truffles. Um, my 16 year old son was in the kitchen when I walked in with my 14 year old son. And uh, my 14 year old asked, hey, what's, what's, what's that for? And I said, well, I want a prize. And he said, well, would you win? And my 16 year old said, I want a prize for being old. And it kind of, kind of made me laugh. He then proceeded to eat all the truffles in about 10 minutes, but allowed me to kind of reflect on being in British Columbia biotech businesses since, since 02. Um, the, the, the relationship with this award to Milton Wong is, is an interesting one for me because I, I started after, after university, I got involved in, in finance and I was a, a, a biotech analyst first in Vancouver and, and then Toronto. And, uh, Milton was one of our original clients. Um, Milt Wong was a prolific investor and supporter of Canadian biotech. And I remember frequently going to his office and, and pitching stories. And, uh, you know, that was kind of my, my, my first foray into, you know, what's been a lifelong involvement in the business of science. And Milt had a style where he would kick the analysts and the brokers out of the office at the end of the meetings, just to talk to management. He would sh shuttle us out of the office and say, thank you, now the adults are gonna talk. And I remember being out there in the lobby, I think it was with a meeting with Angiotech and, and Milton. And uh, I was like, damn it, like I wanna be in that room. And I kind of made a vow to myself that you know, I was gonna you know, keep pushing my career, but eventually take over and, and start running businesses. And ever since 02, uh, 2002, I've been running biotech companies and uh, you know, as, as, as life has evolved and, and you know, we've been successful in a couple different places, now the focus is more and more on continuing to, to fund, support, and build new biotech companies and support, you know, a new generation of, of entrepreneurs. So in kind of conclusion to this, you know, Milton's been, you know, part of the first chapter of my life in biotech, and hopefully there's many more to come, but, you know, like many people tonight, the, uh, you know, the amount of pride and and just delight that I have for so so many of the accomplishments that have come out of our community in the last 10 years, but especially in the last two years, it's just really amazing. So I, I want to congratulate everyone and uh, let's keep kicking ass. It's a, uh, you know, we're a really strong community. You know, there's a lot of capital in the community right now. There's a lot of tension on it. There's a ton of great science. Let's continue to, to do what we've been been doing for for the last decade and you know see where we get in the next decade so thank you everyone thank you doug um i think that's funny what you said your uh, kids said uh just to clarify you didn't get this award because we think you're old <laughs> you <got> the award <laughs> for all your amazing accomplishments but when i said at the beginning of um of this event that I'd seen um, a small like 20 seconds of one video and said that it was quite amusing it was actually that video and your comment about hair and I know that your um, decision about what companies to invest go broader than people's hair but it was uh, an entertaining an entertaining part of your video so huge congratulations um, you've had an extraordinary impact on the sector and will continue to do so and um, we really appreciate it all of us our next um, award is the Medical Technology Company of the Year Award. It's sponsored by St. Paul's Foundation and Providence Health. So please join me in um, welcoming Dr. Sajan, physician, co-director of clinical planning at the new St. Paul's Hospital. Thank you, Wendy. And uh, hello, everyone. There are many ways to define research excellence, funding, papers published, impact, partnerships. By every measure, Providence Healthcare is a research powerhouse. Supported by St. Paul's Foundation, we have more than 1,000 research staff, over 240 principal investigators, and 11 Canada research chairs. Among the hallmarks of our approach is that our scientists, researchers, and clinicians work closely with industry partners to improve patient care across BC and beyond. Providence is where Dr. Julio Montaner developed the treatment to stop people from dying of HIV AIDS. It's where Dr. John Webb developed TAVI, the minimally invasive heart valve replacement procedure. 
That's why it's such a pleasure to be here today to announce that Cardium is the 2021 Medical Technology Company of the Year. Cardium has deep connections with our team. From its inception, the scientists at Cardium have worked closely with our cardiac surgeons and clinician researchers to pioneer new ways to treat people with atrial fibrillation. Today, with the new St. Paul's Hospital already under construction, we're on the cusp of a golden age in medical discovery. The campus will include an incredible research complex about twice the size of the current St. Paul's. It will become a hub for transformational research and unprecedented opportunities for collision and collaboration, bringing research from the bench to the bedside to the marketplace. We are proud to have been part of Cardium's journey and we look forward to partnering and pioneering the future of life-changing research. The Medical Technology Company of the Year Award is presented to an early stage life sciences company which, although not yet achieving commercial success, has demonstrated outstanding performance and realized significant milestones in 2019 and is positioned well for potential future commercial success. The winning company must be headquartered in and have the majority of its operations in BC. It should also have a proven ability to secure capital as well as hold a key market position, opportunity or strategic advantage. The winner of this award must be positioned to achieve strong business results in the future. This year's winner, Cardium, was founded in 2007 and is headquartered in Vancouver. Cardium has been recognized several times as a top company to work for in BC. This past year, Cardium launched and commercialized the Global Mapping and Ablation System, which provides the most complete system for cardiac electrophysiologists to identify and treat atrial fibrillation. The globe catheter features an array of 122 electrodes. Combined with Cardium's GPS 3D mapping and navigation system, which tracks the position of the globe catheter inside the atrium, it creates full 3D high definition maps of the entire atrium to identify targets for ablation. Once identified, the target is immediately ablated with the same electrodes, resulting in a rapid, effective treatment for atrial fibrillation. Using the globe catheter not only reduces procedure time, but also improves the effectiveness of the treatment. In addition to commercializing their revolutionary technology, Cardium has also recently announced a major investment financing of 115 million US dollars which was led by two major blue chip investment funds, Fidelity Investments and T. Rowe Price. This significant investment will allow for continued growth for Cardium and the GLOBE system, and will also contribute to the ongoing growth of the BC Life Sciences ecosystem. Now let's watch our award winners video describing their journey in their own words. So Cardium was founded 14 years ago uh, to really solve the problem of atrial fibrillation, which is the most common heart rhythm disorder in the world. So the first day was spent going to Able Auctions, buying our desks, setting them up, and then starting to work. So it's a very different approach. Uh, we started with a problem, which was this epidemic of atrial fibrillation, and we looked for a solution. I would say of general different concepts, we probably tried about 50 to 60 different ideas till we settled on the right idea. And then from the time we made the first prototype of that concept to the time that we had something that we could even marginally use, I know we made 120 of them. So what I'm most proud of uh, at Cardium is the resilience of the team. It's been a long journey. 14 years is a long time to work on a single product that you really want to see succeed. We've had such strong employee retention over the 14 years that it's the same team that was the, you know, the genesis of this product is still here. <laughs> One of the things to be an entrepreneur is that you have to accept that people will tell you you're not going to succeed many, many times likely that many people won't believe in what you're doing and think that you're crazy. 
So the globe is commercially available in Europe and we're treating patients there. Uh, it is under available in Canada under clinical study and we're about to start a US study for FDA approval. We're super honored to receive the award. It's, it's especially important for us because it comes from our peers. All we think about all day is problems. And it's like, oh, I gotta fix this, I gotta fix this, I gotta fix this. And sometimes you don't look up and say, hey, we've actually achieved quite a bit. And so that's uh, really great for the team at Cardium uh, to feel that recognition from their peers. So where we see Cardium going in the future is uh, building a major uh, life sciences company here in Vancouver. Make sure you enjoy every day. So surround yourself with great people. Uh, work on a problem that's interesting, that you enjoy and uh, accept that it's not going to be moving forward every day. That was awesome. Congratulations, Cardium. I invite Kevin Chaplin, CEO of Cardium, to accept the award. Please welcome Kevin Chaplin. Great, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sajan, for the kind words and introduction. And uh, thank you to Wendy and the whole team at Life Sciences BC for this uh, great award. I have it here, I received it this week. So we have the, uh, the award with us. Thank you, it's a great honor to receive that and uh, recognize the great year that Cardium has had um, with the launch of our GLOBE system and the uh, successfully treating patients uh, in Europe with our commercial system and also uh, in Canada. Um, including uh, soon at St. Paul's Hospital. We look forward to that um, and improving the treatment of atrial fibrillation. Um, our financing last year was also a major a milestone for us and a big success bringing in over $115 million uh, US from two large blue chip investors. We're very excited by that. And uh, we'll be starting our FDA study uh, of our GLOBE system soon. Um, I just learned today from Doug Jansen, that the uh, that boldness is a sign of uh, success in the uh, BC life sciences community or hard work. So you can tell uh, Doug Gertson, who I've led the company with together, uh, is part of the bold club. I still have my hair, so I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, we obviously have been on a very long journey uh, with our whole team, uh, you know, over 14 years now, and I would like to accept this award on behalf of everyone at Cardium, the whole team at Cardium. Uh, we have over 200 people at Cardium now. We've grown over the years and we are only successful because of the excellent people on our team. Um, we've got a fantastic team of brilliant people who have put in hard work, uh, lots of hours overcoming many hurdles, as Doug said, solving many, many problems over the years. And this award recognizes the contribution of the excellent people we have at Cardium. And so I say thank you on behalf of everyone at Cardium. Uh, it's great for us to pause, recognize the great contributions that everyone has made on the team and be recognized as the medical device company of the year. Um, we'd also like to thank Life Sciences BC uh, and we look forward to growing the BC life sciences community um, around companies like Cardium and uh, hope to be an anchor company as we continue to grow in Vancouver. So congratulations uh, to everyone at Cardium for this award. Uh, thank you to BC life sciences and I wish uh, everyone at Cardium uh, success uh, with our ongoing achievements. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. I, I think it's safe to say you're well on your way to being an anchor company in BC, and we're thrilled to be able to uh, to recognize uh, to recognize you. Um, thanks to St. Paul's Foundation and Providence Health for supporting the award. And again, congratulations to Kevin, Doug, and, the, and all the Cardium. I don't know. Do you call them Cardiumers, or to the whole Cardium team? Um, I would. Now, uh, like to move to our next award, uh, the Dr. Don Ricks Lifetime Achievement Award, and it is supported by AstraZeneca and will be presented by Ilias Iliopoulos. And uh, Ilias, you can tell me if I finally pronounced your name correctly. <laughs> That's great, <laughs> Wendy. Absolutely, you're right there. Uh, thank you very much, Wendy, uh, and thank you to Life Sciences BC for the opportunity uh, to present this prestigious award. 
there's perhaps never been a more exciting period of time when it comes to great new medical advances and discoveries. From expanding our understanding about the complexities of disease to driving much earlier diagnosis to the discovery and development of breakthrough targeted therapies. At AstraZeneca, science is in our DNA and at the core of everything we do. As one of the country's leading biopharmaceutical companies, we are a science-led organization that pushes the boundaries of science to deliver innovative, life-changing medicines and transform the treatment paradigm of diseases like asthma, diabetes, cancer, and many more. This unwavering belief and focus on the power of science is why I am honored to be here to present the Dr. Don Ricks Lifetime Achievement Award to this year's winner. This award is given to an individual whose contributions may be a new innovation, new knowledge, or ways to improve professional practice. In choosing this year's winner, many factors were considered, including partnerships, accomplishments of milestones, national recognition, and growth. I am pleased to announce that this year's award goes to Dr. Helen Burt. Dr. Helen Burt recently retired from UBC, where she held positions as Associate Vice President, Research and Innovation, and VP, Research and Innovation, Pro Temp. Recently appointed an Officer of the Order of Canada, Dr. Burt has a long history in the BC life sciences sector in research and development of novel nanoparticulate drug delivery systems and also in leadership within the BC biotech sector through her role with Admare Bioinnovations, Canada's global life sciences venture. As Angiotech Professor of Drug Delivery in UBC's Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dr. Burt developed polymer-based drug delivery systems for controlled localized drug delivery. She published over 160 peer-reviewed papers, numerous patents, and received several teaching prizes and research awards. Partnered with Angiotech Pharmaceuticals, her research group developed preclinical drug delivery systems. She was director of research in Angiotech from 1996 to 1997. Other collaborations include ARC medical devices and oncogenics. Development of an intravesicular nanoparticulate drug delivery system for treating bladder cancer led to a long-term research partnership with Admare. Knowing the challenges of translating academic research into commercial success, Helen was also amongst a small group of leaders who came together to try to design and found a org new organization that could support these efforts. That organization became the CDRD, the Center for Drug Research and Development, where Helen led the establishment of its innovative training program. The program was designed to make sure our industry was equipped with scientists who not only had the academic teachings, but also, also the skills to drive industrial drug development. Today, Helen is still a strong and supportive leader in the life sciences, both in BC and across Canada. Now let's watch our award winners video describing their journey in their own words. I'll start by saying that I've had a 40 year academic career, all of it at UBC and including a PhD uh, in pharmaceutical sciences at UBC. I got my undergraduate in the UK and was working for a company called Cyanamid of Great Britain. And then I got restless. I wanted something of an adventure. I came to UBC to do my PhD. That was when I changed direction and decided that academia was going to be for me. If I can make a shout out to my lab manager, who in fact worked with me for 37 of those 40 years um, and was an incredibly creative mind. And we worked together with our team fantastically well. So I'm, I'm really proud of the team and the projects. My connection back into pharmaceutical R&D was in the form of Bill Hunter. He was an undergraduate medical student. He had all these ideas uh, for using anti-angiogenic agents in new innovative drug delivery systems, which is my area of expertise. So I thought, wow, this is an incredible opportunity that spurred 15-year collaboration and partnership 
with Angiotech Pharmaceuticals and I spent a year actually as the director of research for Angiotech in 1996. I'm now fully retired from UBC. I moved to the east side. I really wanted a vibrant neighborhood with young people and I love the diversity of this neighborhood. And I got myself a puppy, so I'm a first time dog owner. <laughs> and so she's been a full-time project. My, my real interest uh, that spurred for some, from some work that I did in Rwanda uh, for several years is working with refugees and new immigrants to Vancouver. I'd love to do kind of roll up your sleeves, help them find accommodation, schools, medical services, daycare, all the things that uh, I think must be incredibly hard for people when they land from a different country here. I'm absolutely uh, gobsmacked by being one of a group of incredibly distinguished scientists and innovators who have uh, received this uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. So I feel truly honored and privileged to be part of that group. Please join me in virtually welcoming Dr. Helen Berg, this year's Dr. Don Ricks Lifetime Achievement Award recipient. Thank you very much, Elias. Um, I'd first like to start out by acknowledging that I'm very fortunate to be uh, currently coming to you from the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. Good afternoon and thank you all uh, for taking time out from your busy schedules to attend the ceremony today. I think you will have seen from the video that we just watched that I'm now busy with things uh, that are very different to my previous work life. Um, and I might add, I'm having a great deal of fun. I'd like to pass along my sincere congratulations to the other award recipients here today who are such an incredibly accomplished group of people. And um, it's pretty special because I actually know most, if not all, of the award winners today. My deepest thanks and appreciation to Life Sciences BC for honoring me with this award and to Wendy and her team for their work in organizing the ceremony. It's such a privilege to receive an award for doing work that, for me, um, has been both rewarding and exciting and was possible to carry out only with the support and collaboration of so many generous and talented people in the life sciences and academic communities. I'm so grateful for a wonderful career in the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences at UBC, a community who 40 years ago took a chance on giving a job to a nerdy, young Mancunian woman. I had the great good fortune to be surrounded and supported by so many faculty, staff, trainees, and students who were amazing friends, mentors, advisors, collaborators, and partners. The BERT Lab team members uh, who you saw in the video, a, a, a small group of them, and in particular, my lab manager and research scientist of 35 plus years, John Jackson, we're an incredible bunch of creative and entrepreneurial scientists who enjoyed the opportunity to contribute to research that had the potential to impact uh, drug and medical device development. And several members of the lab it did indeed go on to create new spin-off companies. I'd like to thank a group of life sciences leaders from whom I've learned so much during this journey and who have provided support, encouragement, a friendship, and many, many laughs over many bottles of wine along the way. Karima S. Sabah, Norma Sebastian, Natalie Dakers, Catherine Hayashi, Barry G, Gordon Cawley, Shauna Turner, Peter Collis, Angus Livingston, JP Heal, and many others who um, I'd love to have had time to, to, to call out by name. 
Finally, I would like to acknowledge the lifelong love and support of my wonderful Canadian and my British families. And thank you all again. Thank you, Wendy and the Life Sciences team. Thank you, Helen. Congratulations. Um, be sure to check out the chat. It is going very rapidly in so many people that are congratulating you. I think it's fair to say we all find you and your career an inspiration. I'm also super excited to have met your puppy virtually, having um, heard about it when I got the opportunity uh, to call Helen and let her know that she had won the award. So it's great to see your puppy well and uh, you enjoying your time time with him. Um, we are now at um, our last award, which is the Life Sciences Company of the Year. And I would like to introduce Hector McKay Dunn, who is going to present the award. Hector? Well, I'm here, Wendy. Sorry, just, uh, just a little bit late on the clicker. Um, <laughs> so uh, so it's, it's just a, a great uh, pleasure uh, to be uh, once again, uh, a presenting sponsor and on behalf of my partner uh, James Haddon our Ferris colleagues in the group um, you know we're just delighted to 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 be I guess now it's our 23rd year being the founding founding and now presenting sponsor for this this annual awards uh, event and uh, it uh, never disappoints and uh, and this year is beyond our I think all of our wildest imaginations if we think back 23 years ago um, you know, our success uh, as a firm in the, in the field has really been a reflection of the success of the entire community. And so we've grown as, as, as the entire community has grown. And through that process, we've been fortunate to, you know, guide many of the uh, groundbreaking financings, uh, uh, mergers, and uh, and uh, global partnerships, some of which have been mentioned today. And so it's, it's our pleasure now to, to make the, the presentation for the Company of the Year Award. And the title really says it all. Um, so this, this award goes to a company that stands, stands out above all uh, over the past year. And I think you'll all agree that this year, so winner uh, far exceeds that. The criteria includes transitioning from an early stage to perhaps a fully robust established uh, enterprise, uh, raising significant funds, achieving regulatory approval, uh, commercial product launch, um, achieving or nearing commercial success. Well, this year's award winner really ticks all of those boxes and then some. So, uh, so I'm, like, I'm delighted to confirm that this year's recipient is of course, Upcelera Biologics. Now we'll we'll see a video uh, in a in a moment or two, and that'll better explain the the great achievements for Abcelera. But to mention just a few, um, Abcelera developed an industry leading proprietary operating system for antibody drug discovery. They were at the forefront of the COVID nineteen global response through the discovery of Vamlanivimab. Not easy to say. Uh, which was the first antibody therapy for COVID-19 approved by the FDA, of course, and Health Canada. Uh, they were able to bring two antibodies into the clinic within 12 months, quite amazing. And if that wasn't enough, a breakthrough IPO uh, raising more than 550 million US real dollars uh, as part of their IPO. Uh, but that's not, you know, when you think about Accelera and all of their achievements, uh, it's really, as much or more about the future as it is about what they've achieved uh, in the past few years. Um, they've got terrific plans, they've made terrific contributions, but they've got terrific plans and, and really stand to be a dream anchor for our community. They've uh, built a 380,000 square foot global headquarters in Mount Pleasant, um, a first of its kind CMC GMP manufacturing facility for their antibody therapy development. Uh, in part, of course, supported by the uh, Canadian government's uh, $175 million from its Strategic Innovation Fund in support of uh, pandemic preparedness. And so, and not to mention plans to hire hundreds of 
many hundreds of skilled scientific and tech professionals over the next several years. And so, so I think Absilera, it's fair to say Absilera has helped place BC, secure BC's place, because I'm, many others have contributed um, on the global map as a tech innovation hub. And so now please join me in watching the video. Actually, 30 years ago, uh, the field that we work in, which is therapeutic antibodies, uh, didn't really exist. Uh, in fact, you know, the large pharma was skeptical that these large molecules, which are naturally made by immune systems, could be uh, best-in-class drugs. The technologies that we're bringing to it are really focused on revamping that entire process, on using the modern tools of science, the computation, the artificial intelligence, the molecular biology. In my grad work, I was working on microfluidic technologies and specifically on how we could use those to analyze single cells. It was that platform that I then took to UBC and over the course of seven years, we built up capabilities, basically searching, decoding and analyzing natural immune systems one cell at a time. Uh, and that laid the foundation for what became Epcelera. So really a homegrown technology uh, that dates back you know, at least uh, to 2000. And even before that here in Vancouver, you know, some pioneers that laid the foundation of even thinking about new ways to do antibody discovery. Uh, right up to before the pandemic hit, we had run some uh, test cases or pressure tests where we simulated a pandemic and had all hands on deck to prove that we could shrink that discovery uh, timeline from many, many months to only 60 days. Um, and it was right after that that the first case of COVID-19 was reported in the US. Uh, that very same day, we called an all hands meeting and you know, recognize that whether it was ready or not, we were better positioned than anyone uh, to step up and to bring the first therapeutic antibody to the clinic at world record speed. And to see that now go out and help what is now over 600,000 patients um, to save over 10,000 lives is something that you aspire to do if you're in biotech. Uh, and when it's done in the course of a year, I mean, that's impactful and really galvanize the team around uh, what could be accomplished. You know, if a positive thing could have come out of the pandemic is that it has really raised the profile of the importance of life science research and the opportunity in technologies to better understand and uh, ultimately to treat diseases. You know, thinking about the sector and the future of biotech here in British Columbia and Canada, um, I really do hope that people recognize what a position we're in. Uh, never before have we had the opportunity to build companies on a global scale that can really make a difference. Uh, this is an important time. It's important we get the policies right. It's important that we think big and we make the investments to make sure that we're scaling companies and taking you know, this early opportunity and making it something that lasts not just for decades, but for a hundred years to come. So please join me in welcoming the COO of Absilera to say a few words, Veronique Lacoe. Thank you very much, uh, Hector. And thank you, Wendy, and the entire Life Census BC team for really giving us the opportunity to come together uh, tonight and, and celebrate the achievements of, of our community. I also want to thank the Life Census BC board uh, who donate their time generously uh, to build and elevate our life census community here in DC. And I'm so delighted and honored uh, to accept this award on behalf of all Epsilorites. Uh, I'd also like to con congratulate um, all the recipients here today. Uh, it's an honor to stand here. And it makes me so proud as a Canadian to see what we're building right now in BC. We, we founded Absalera nearly a decade ago. And when we started running out our business plan for the BC New Ventures competition, uh, we're given two different types of feedback. One was you can't build a company like that uh, in Canada. There's not enough capital. There's not enough expertise. Uh, it's never been done before. And then there was another group of people who told us, well, you're not capturing, uh, your plans are not capturing the opportunity that you have ahead of you. And they got it. They saw what we were trying to build and they encouraged us to think bigger. 
And that's what we did. Uh, and I'm glad we listened uh, because we kept aiming high. And while the path forward had many unknowns, uh, we trusted our instinct. We saw BC as a place to build a solid foundation for our home. And as we were incubating at UBC, uh, we saw the immense talent and potential of the people around us. Uh, we saw creative minds, new technologies, curiosity, and the willingness to really do work that matters. And we believed in BC. We had a few award recipients referring to a village uh, throughout the evening, and it couldn't be more true. It takes a community to build a lasting company. And I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge those organization and the people who helped us along the way and contributing to removing some of the barriers uh, in our path. And that includes IRAP, UBC, uh, Western Economic Diversification, Genome BC, NSERC, CIF, EDC, and the mentors and investors who helped us along the way. Uh, special thanks to Doug Jensen, uh, who's also being recognized tonight, and thank you for believing in us so early. Uh, hopefully some of us can uh, still keep some hair on our head and, and still do, do great things like, like you have. Um, really only need to look at the pandemic to see what Canada can do and what role it can play on the world stage. And last year we rallied, collaborated with research institutions to access patient, patient samples. And today our antibody therapies have saved uh, more than 10,000 lives. And there are many other homegrown companies uh, also from our local universities that played a major role in, in the pandemic. And I think about Equitas and Precision. And we do the work that we do and we continue to push the frontiers of science as an industry because it can change lives. And this past year has really exemplified why this is so important. Uh, what we see today with all the companies who are also honored is that we have momentum as an industry and we have so much to offer to the world. And if we choose to, we can turn BC into a world-class biotech hub. And I think there's at least two things we must do together to move forward. The first one is to keep innovating. And most importantly, we need to make sure that those early innovators, they have the ability to scale here in BC. And to make this happen, we have to work, to work together. And everyone uh, in the Zoom today has a role to play. Uh, and you have the power to make a difference. Entrepreneurs, investors, policymakers, scientists, universities, uh, industry associations, and I'd like to encourage each of us today to ask ourselves, what can I do to contribute to making BC a hub for life sciences? And we must seize the opportunity that we have uh, in front of us and leverage the momentum that we've built. Uh, and finally, I want to thank all Accelerites for their commitment and dedication over the years, and also their families who continue to provide incredible support and all of you who also contribute to creating uh, our life sciences industry. Uh, I've never been so hopeful and excited about the future. Hopefully you can see my enthusiasm and, and also share it. And the opportunity we have collectively ahead of us as an industry uh, is immense. And we can think bigger and turn our village into a global city. Thanks again. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. And I hope we'll be able to connect uh, in, in person in the near future. Thank you, Veronique. Um, what an amazing uh, way to um, bring our closing, our, our award ceremony to an end. Your enthusiasm is infectious. Your accomplishments are amazing. And um, it's just, it's really, uh, it's really wonderful to have you be able to join us and for you to be able to leave us on such a, leave the, or close off the event on such a positive note. Um, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to celebrate with us today, the winners. Um, we all know we'd prefer to be together in person. And I think it's fair to say with the extraordinary 
BC scientific leadership that we have, I've never been more hopeful that we probably will be able to be in person um, next year. Personally, I found this an incredibly inspiring afternoon, and I thank you all for your engagement through the chat. Um, you know, I know everyone's super, super busy, and so it's really nice for people to take the time to pause and um, reflect and recognize everybody. I also want to thank the Life Sciences uh, BC Board for, for your support of uh, everything that you do as as has been said, we have an amazing board at Life Sciences BC who dedicates an extraordinary amount of time um, to advancing the sector. I also want to thank the nomination committee, um, our behind the scenes group that, uh, sorry, adjudication committee. It's not an easy job to, um, to figure out when we have all these amazing, amazing nominations. And so thank you. Uh, you're some unsung heroes uh, through this awards process. I'd like to thank the LSBC team, Amanda, Ryan, William, Peter, Tim, and Steve, and our four new co-ops who joined us a couple of weeks ago, Tab, Megan, Madeline, and Joanna. This really is a team effort in putting on this event. Um, so thank you all. Before we um, close off, I wanted to tell you about some upcoming events. Next week, we have a session with Fujitsu. Uh, it's gonna be about quantum inspired drug development. So it should be very interesting. On October 7th, our Blake's Breakfast series is gonna be focusing on radio pharmaceuticals and BC's leadership in that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, October 20th, Discovery to Market. We'll have Gowlings talking about the role of IP strategy and drug development. And November 3rd and 4th will be our annual Invest in BC conference, which many of the companies that won awards today have presented at in the past, which is sort of fun. We already have almost uh, representatives from almost 45 countries that have signed up, and we haven't even announced uh, who is presenting yet. So again, please join me in congratulating all of our leaders one more time. Their influence on the life sciences, biotech and medtech space is extraordinary and is making a difference, as you've all heard, both in British Columbia and globally. As many of our winners have said, we have something special in BC, world-class science, extraordinary innovation, risk takers, innovatives, innovators, and entrepreneurs. So now's our time, let's seize it. Thank you very much.